everyone and welcome to our last reading lesson of the fourth grade year. For this lesson you will need your reading book, page 15, and your work packet, page 21. Also you will need a pencil. So I will pause for a moment while everyone turns to those pages. So here on page 21 of your packet, let's read our close reading purpose. Reread the timeline on page 15 of The Power of Electricity. How did each of these scientists contribute to the study of electricity? How was their work important? I'm going to highlight their work and important because you're going to explain how each of them was important to the study of electricity. So we'll be looking at Benjamin Franklin, Alessandro Volta, Michael Faraday, Thomas Edison, and Nikola Tesla. Look now at your reading book, page 15. And let's read about pioneers of electricity. The technologies people used to power their lives were made possible by a series of discoveries and inventions. Each of the key players in electricity added his own spark of genius. Beginning with 1752, Benjamin Franklin. His experiment was called lightning in a bottle. Franklin, excuse me, Franklin proved that lightning is a type of electricity, storing it in Leyden jars. In his footsteps, many scientists continued to explore different ways to produce and use electricity efficiently. 1800, Alessandro Volta the first battery. Volta placed large plates made of different types of metals into a chemical solution. The combination sent electricity flowing through a wire. He called his invention a voltaic pile. 1831, Michael Faraday, the electric generator. Faraday found a way to move electrons through a wire without using chemicals. He set electrons free by rotating a copper disc between two magnets, sending electricity flowing through a wire via electromagnetism. 1879 we have Thomas Edison, the electric lighting system. Edison created a complete electric lighting system with generators, power lines, light fixtures, and the first electric light bulb. 1887 Nikola Tesla, the induction motor. Tesla's induction motor generated alternating current, or AC. Tesla's technology outmatched Edison's direct current, or DC, system. AC still powers the electric grid we use today. I'm going to model the first example on Benjamin Franklin. And then the rest of the examples you will do on your own. Let's go ahead again and read our purpose for reading. How did each of these scientists contribute to the study of electricity? How was their work important? I'm going to understand that to mean how is their work important to the future? What I mean by that is, how does their invention influence future inventors and the inventors of today? So 
So what did Benjamin Franklin, in, excuse me, Benjamin Franklin invent or prove? Franklin proved that lightning is a type of electricity, storing it in Leyden jars. Excuse me, Leyden jars. In his footsteps, many scientists continued to explore different ways to produce and use electricity efficiently. So I'm going to say that Franklin's invention was the Leyden jar. I keep mispronouncing that, the Leyden jar. It stored lightning. as electricity. How was his work important? Others followed in his footsteps. Which means that other people, such as Volta, Faraday, Edison, and Tesla followed what he learned about electricity when they were learning and developing their own inventions. So that is what you are going to find. You're going to find their invention and how did it influence people in the future? How is it important to other people, not only other people studying electricity, but other people using electricity, like those of us today? Let's go down now to the question at the bottom of the page. And as I've said several times before, if this has been covered up with a black line, Please write your answer, A, B, C, or D, down at the bottom so we can discuss it. Which two scientists had ideas that were competing against each other? So what you're going to want to do is you are going to want to reread page 15 in the book and find which of the two people have been put together in one of the descriptions as showing that they are competing against each other. You will only find one of these pairs of names put together in one of these different passages on page 15. That is your reading assignment. Now I'm going to be giving you a spelling assignment. I am going to read through page 30. So let's go ahead and look at page 30 in your reading book. I'm going to read A Night in Tesla's Lab. As always with the reading, I will explain any vocabulary that is difficult along the way. And your job after the video is done is going to be to find words with the spelling patterns that we worked on for this week's selection. So you're looking for words with odd, which means to hear, auto, which means self, ven, which means to come, mit, to move, migra to move, and graph to draw or write. A night in Tesla's lab. Last night, I dreamed that I visited Nikola Tesla in his laboratory. Why did I dream of this great scientist and inventor? Maybe it's because I'm reading about Tesla in school, or maybe it's because his inventions fascinate me. 
And as we have done before in our readings, we're circling the words that have these spelling patterns. So I'm going to model one of those for you. There's the word inventor, which is one of our spelling words. And in that paragraph, there will be another word in that word family. Paragraph two. In my name, in my dream, Tesla and I were friends. As we talked in his lab, Tesla reminisced about his mother. Reminisced means that he remembered his past. People reminisce or think about or talk about the old days, like the days when they were growing up. So Tesla reminisced or remembered about his mother who invented household appliances. He described how he had emigrated from Europe to America with just four cents in his pocket. Then he showed me some of his inventions. Tesla enjoyed having an audience and his laboratory was the perfect venue for a show. Venue, as you remember, is a place where you have an event. A wedding is at a venue, a show is at a venue. He demonstrated a coil that he had invented and I audibly gasped as the coil generated a spectacular electrical display. Next, Tesla showed me his early X-ray shadow graphs and a radio controlled boat that he had built. He laughingly admitted that people who didn't understand his work believed he controlled the boat with his mind. Tesla's mood turned serious when he talked about the possibility of transmitting wireless energy and receiving signals from outer space. He confided to me, and confided is when you tell someone something important. And when you confide in someone, you're usually telling just one person. It's a little bit like telling them a secret. He confided to me that he was inventing a death beam that would make war impossible. I couldn't believe it. It's what we call a laser beam. I was about to ask Tesla more when I heard a voice. Chris, it's time to get up. Dad was shaking my shoulder. What a dream, I said as I sat up in bed. I spent the entire night in Tesla's laboratory and I didn't even get his autograph. Oops, I just realized I read that last paragraph and we couldn't see it. Hopefully you were following along as I was reading. So now, again, you are going to look for words with these spelling patterns and you are going to circle those words with that spelling pattern. Okay, so that is it for today's lesson. At the very end, I will go ahead and show you the things that you need to have done for this afternoon. If you were at yesterday's lesson, remember I said that tomorrow's dress up day is wear a mask day. And just like 
when we said that you couldn't attend the meeting unless you showed your video. You also cannot attend the meeting tomorrow unless you have some sort of mask. We're going to practice listening to each other and talking in a mask for the lesson from the time that you come into the meeting until we're done going over the work. Then we can take them off. So some options you have for masks include an actual mask if you have one. Covering your nose and mouth. And by the way, proper procedure for a mask is that you don't touch the front at all because then the germs from your hands are getting onto your mask. You only handle it by the earpieces. And if we happen to have to do school that way, you will have it on from the time that you come on campus until the time that you go off campus. Now, if you don't have an actual mask, there are many other choices that you can use. You can use a bandana. And pretend that you are robbing a train. You can use a scarf. Now, you can't use something that has holes in it like this, but this was the only scarf I could find at the moment. But the easy way to use a scarf is to just wrap it around your face. You might need to use two layers to make sure that it stays on, especially since mine has holes. Of course, a scarf might get kind of hot, but you'll only be wearing it for about 20 minutes. And again, this is just for practice. By the way, a little shout out to Ryan, or Ryan's mother, Mrs. Benders, for making me this nice scarf at Christmas. If you have nothing else, you can use a kitchen towel. I have folded mine in half. You can put that over your mouth and nose. Hopefully you have some kind of a pin. I'm using a clothespin and you can ask somebody to pin it on you. And all of these are ways that you can keep your germs from spreading to other people. All right, that's it. I hope to see you all today at 2.20. Goodbye for now.